Hi everyone, this is Heather from the Flourish Academy. It is our weekly Q&A. It is my favorite time of week. I have some questions here, but if you jump on, you can post them below as well, and I'll try to get through everything. The first question was from my friend Laura, and she says, well, she started the question with, I'm going through Heather withdrawal, which is really nice, thank you. Are you going to offer the mini sessions in the community group? So what Laura was referring to was I have a separate group for my goal setting time management ladies. So I started that earlier this year and I've been working with them. That's a paid group. So um, I talked with her offline about them. I With that, I'm offering more in that group, but um, that's for Laura or anyone who's a part of that group. Yes, there will be more videos in that group some more content we're working through. Uh, Ashley asks, have you tried Show It and do you like it? And then I asked her, um, was she referring to Show It for websites or just slideshows? So Show It, I think now just does websites, but in the past they did slideshows. And when I say past, whoo, I had purchased Show It probably about 10 years ago. And that was for taking your photos and putting them to video. Hi Kim, thanks for jumping on. I didn't get to your question yet, so that's next. Okay, but anyway, show it. Did I like it? When I was using it, hi Susie. <laughs> when I was using it for slideshows, I thought it was really great. I mean, I took my photos, I put them to music and I posted them on my website. And in fact, if you go onto the Weddings by Heather blog and you go way back, you will see a show it slideshow for every wedding that I did. Oh, I don't remember the years, but a long time ago. I really liked it. And then I don't know when they launched their website platform, but I think that's what Ashley is asking about. Have I tried show it for websites? No, I have not. I do know a few people that have. However, my friend Chrissy is using it. I think you know Chrissy, so you can talk to her separately. And she liked it. She thought it was really pretty. It worked well. There were a couple of things that she wasn't crazy about. So she recently switched back to Pro Photo, and one of the things was there is a yearly fee with Show It, um, which you can break down to monthly as well, and it just got a little bit expensive. Don't quote me on this because I did not go to their website, but I want to say it's somewhere between twenty and forty a month, and that would be on top of, in addition to your registrant fees with like GoDaddy and or. I don't know if she had hosting with them or if that was separate. I don't know. I mean, I'm not crazy about monthly fees, so I would rather purchase a theme or a platform just outright and own it and um, work on it myself, you know, design it that way. But she did like it, but she switched away from it partly because of the price, but also because they have a few issues with SEO. Now, of course, they have SEO. Of course they do. But after digging a little bit deeper with my resident SEO expert, Leanne, we were taking a look at the code and the SEO just wasn't that great on the Show It sites as compared to the other sites that we were looking at, any really any other site we were looking at. Um, pro photo websites as well as the Divi theme that her and I use and if you look at the code um, in reference to SEO then show it was not awesome uh, and I'm sorry about that but um, that was just our opinion after looking at it so I would definitely you know when I'm looking for a new service or software for something the first thing I do is map out my needs what do I need this to do for me and then I try to find the software or platform that fits those needs and if it works for you then that's great you know I don't have a problem with it but um, just figure out what it is you're looking for and then weigh the pros and cons and make that determination so hopefully that helps David says I'm getting ready to paint my office where I do my photo editing so that's important does the color I paint matter much if I calibrate my monitor properly I hope not as I'm tired of light gray I love this question. Yes, it does matter because every paint will give you some type of color cast. Now, that being said, you can go with a lot of different neutral palettes and you'll be okay. 
I have a friend that was really kind of crazy about this and she painted her office 18% gray. She eliminated window light and she had controlled lighting and everything was perfect for her editing and her photos were perfect. I'm sure they were great. I don't know that you need to go to that extreme. I am sitting in my office right now. I edit right there on my iMac. I am sitting facing two large windows, so I have sun coming in this way. So I definitely have my monitor facing away from the windows, not into the windows. And actually Craig's desk is right here. His monitors face the window light. I wouldn't edit on those monitors. But that being said, you can see the color of my office right now. It's called Shark. There's a couple of shark colors from Valspar. I think it's Shark Loop is the name of this color. And it is a cool gray, so it has blue in it. So it's a blue gray. Could that impact my editing? I suppose that it could, but it's fairly neutral. There's a blue cast for sure. I have calibrated my monitor. I have tested my prints and everything looks great. So I'm not gonna be a freak about it, you know, like a pixel peep or anything, but I wouldn't suggest that you paint your office bright red or yellow because those would give you color casts on your monitor that could cause issues. So. I don't think you need to go to either extreme, David. I don't think that you have to be an 18% gray kind of person, uh, nor do I think you should be, you know, painting it something really bright and bold. Something in the middle would work well. Uh, I don't know that I would do white. I read somewhere once that painting an office white was not a good idea. But I can't remember why. <laughs> so you'd have to look that up. So as you can see, I have a light blue shark loop, it's called, from Valspar. I love Valspar paint. Um, and it seems, it seems to serve me well. I mean, yes, calibrate your monitor. If the photos are coming back and they look good, then it's probably not an issue. And I don't think you're a pixel peeper, um, but a lot of people are and they get all kinds of crazy about this. And um, there's more important things to focus our efforts on. Okay, Kim. Kim, I know you're here. Kim said, what is the first thing you need to do to start your business? How long should you volunteer your services to friends? I guess what I'm saying is how do you know when it's time to put yourself out there? I love this, Kim. This is a great question. You are not alone. A lot of people ask this question. Hi, Jordy. How are you? And the first thing I'm going to say is what is the first thing you need to do to start your business? You ready for this? Get a camera if you're in photography. <laughs> get a camera. That's the first thing. Second thing, get a computer for a blue Lightroom. Oh, then you're in business. You're ready to go. Take some photos, edit some photos, deliver said photos, and you are in business. Start accepting money, and it is legit. You are for real. So those are the things you need to do to get started, and if you are taking photos and you are accepting money, um, I, I mean, I'm pretty lax with my definition. I'd call you a professional photographer. I'd say you're an expert in your field. And remember, being an expert doesn't mean you're the best photographer in the world. It just means that you know more than your client. And if you know more than them and you are able to take better photos than they can do themselves with their iPhone, then you're an expert and they'll pay you for it. So the question is really not so much about what you have, but I think your question is more about how you feel and whether you feel confident enough to put yourself out there. And I will say this, if all of us waited until we were absolutely ready to say, have children, there would be no babies in the world because nobody would do it, especially if you knew what you were in for. So you'll never be ready. And all of the books, hundreds, thousands of books I read, they all say basically the same thing, which is to start before you're ready. You are probably going to make mistakes. You are going to take bad photos. You are absolutely going to look back on your images and think they were awful. And that is a-okay because you can't get better until you start. I've said this quote before from Zig Ziglar. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. So you have to put yourself out there and do something. 
Do anything, I beg of you, take your camera, which I know you own, take photos, and start charging some money. You have to just do it. Some action is better than no action. And now, then the question is, okay, when am I gonna feel ready? Well, you're not gonna feel ready, just do it anyway. And how can I get to the point where I feel ready? You have to do it more. And I've also said this before, if you wanna double your income, double your self-esteem. How do you improve your self-esteem? Learn new things, try new things, um, experiment, take more photos, make mistakes, fail, get back up. Uh, my good friend Jessica is an ice dancer and I'm sure she would agree with this. The best ice skaters and ice dancers are the ones who started out and were not afraid to fall. In fact, they welcomed it. They would go out on the ice, they would try that triple lutz, they would fall every single time and they would continue to to do it and fall and hurt themselves until they nailed it and then they would practice it further so you can't be afraid to put yourself out there don't wait till you feel like you're ready but then part of your question was how do I sort of transition from free shoots to paid shoots and how do I start telling friends this if you saw my live video yesterday on the flourish Academy page I talked about getting people to pay you what you're worth because people will never pay you what you're worth. They'll pay you what they think you're worth, but you control their thinking. So if friends are asking you to take photos and they're asking you to do it for free because you've been doing it for free, that's fine. But at some point you just smile and when someone says to you, hey, can you take my daughter's photos next week? You smile and you say, yeah, that's $50, period. And that's what it is. And if they say, oh, Oh, I thought you were going to do it for free because you've been doing it for free. No, that's over. But thank you for asking. I mean, don't make a big deal out of it. Don't worry what other people think about you. That's your biggest problem. Not you specifically, but you generally, women in general. The biggest problem is you're worried what other people think. Who cares? You want to do it, you tell them, oh, it's $50. Oh, it's $100. What's the worst they can say? No? Okay, well then I have more free time to play with my chickens. Uh, I mean, that doesn't bother me. Um, you have to be okay with rejection and hearing no and um, not worry so much about what people think or that they're gonna be upset. They don't care, you just tell them how it is. Aren't you more comfortable being around someone who has more presence about themselves than someone who's like, oh, I don't know. I mean, I was thinking, I was thinking maybe I would charge you like, $25 or if that's okay. Are you okay with that? I mean, I'm just starting out. Oh, I wouldn't hire you. It's crazy. It's $50. It's $100. It's $5,000. I don't know. Just say something, but you have to put something out there and do it. Uh, are you ready? Probably not, but are you ready? Yes. Just feet on the pavement, go out, take photos, and start just laying down a price and see what happens. You might be surprised at how many people are willing to pay, and who cares about the people that aren't, that's fine, and you just keep moving forward. Uh, Kim, I'm not hearing from you, I hope that helps. <laughs> are you with me? You just have to do it anyway. Okay, that was my little rant. Um, let me make sure I covered all, all of that. What do you need? You need a camera and a computer with Lightroom. Ah, and some fortitude, fortitude and you just make it happen. The people that I have mentored over the years that I have seen experience the most success are the ones who just do it. They just go out there, they take photos, and they don't let anything stop them. And the ones who kind of just stay in the same place are just not making it happen, and it is 100% up here every single time it has nothing to do with equipment or skill it is completely a frame of mind so um, improve your self-esteem work on your mindset you'll feel better learn something new you'll be awesome very very good all right there was another question that was from that group and if you have any questions while we're on live please type it below I think I am seeing comments today I think I am because I saw a few so let me know if you have any other questions. I want to address my friend Brittany's question. She posted yesterday. She said, I usually would accept payment the day of a shoot, and lately I have noticed a number of potential clients get impatient, hire someone else without telling me, and as a result, I have decided to start requiring payment when booking. I know, I know, I should have done this from the start. 
but this is something but is this something I should make known with a post or just start telling clients when they ask about booking a session hi Kim it's nice to see you so I would say never ever are you ready for this I love these blanket statements first I'll say don't ever say never or always and then I'll, I'll use a statement like this but I would never ever ever recommend taking payment on the day of a shoot I don't care what kind of shoot it is I wouldn't do it I would always have a non refundable retainer in order to secure your date now weddings are different than any other type of shoot but for weddings you have a non refundable retainer to secure your date and then you have payments but you are always paid in full at least one month prior to the wedding always for portraits or any other type of shoe <clears throat> I would suggest that you have that non refundable retainer and by the way don't make it $25 because that's really easy to walk away from make it an amount so that you don't get can cancellations that's the point of it so you could say $100 non refundable retainer and the remainder is due one week prior but I wouldn't do it the day of the session why well there's a couple of reasons at least from the wedding world there's just too much going on and you're asking your client to remember their checkbook or their card or one more thing no I don't want to put that kind of pressure on them and also I want our relationship to be just easy and relaxed and I don't want to talk about money with them not face to face I have no problem talking about money and I certainly don't have a problem asking for money but I want to take care of that transactional type stuff prior to the shoot so that when we're shooting we can just focus on shooting so I don't care how you do that if you're getting mail checks or if you're doing it online through something like PayPal and by the way if you don't have a PayPal account you can get one and there's square I mean there's a million resources um, these resources were not always available so it's so easy now in fact my daughter Ella who sells cupcakes has a PayPal account and she has a URL so if you wanted to send her money, you could go to paypal.me slash ellajl and you could send her money right now. She's 14. And if you put a slash after that in a number, that number will automatically populate the field and they can pay you. So you could have something like that, really simple and easy. You could create it right now in about five minutes. And listen, looky here. Here is the number one rule in business. Make it easy for people to give you money if someone says to me can I pay you I, they don't even need to finish their sentence the answer is yes you can pay me because whatever they're gonna say next I am able to accept that payment make it easy for someone to pay you if they want to do it online if they want to send me a check if they want to eh, you know and I do have a few people that want to pay me in cash okay we can meet ahead of time oh, and I do have some really good long-term clients for family sessions only I will allow them to pay me cash on the day of those are extreme exceptions because I have relationships with them but typically I would not recommend that make it easy for people to pay you give them whatever tools they need and by the way um, I've seen this happen with photographers who are not prepared to accept checks that are made out different ways so for instance you could write me a check right now to Heather Lawtonen Heather Lawtonen Photography LLC Weddings by Heather Life by Heather Flourish Academy you could write me a check any way you want and I'd say thank you I would never want to say to a client and I know this has happened to people but I would never want a client to hand me a check and look at it and say I'm sorry I can't accept this because you made it out to something that I cannot cash never I would never want that to happen therefore when I established my LLC and all my DBAs doing business as I made sure I went in person to my bank and I said hey if I come in with a check that's made out this way this way this way can I deposit it or cash it yes 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 okay we're good Melissa says what if you are at a wedding and they want to extend an hour how do you go about paying the additional fee for example great question so I say to clients they have eight hours of coverage and it's three hundred and twenty five dollars per hour after eight hours some clients know that they want me more than eight hours ahead of time so they'll pay me ahead of time that's great some clients I say you know what let's play it by ear because you may think you need me but you may not and I don't want you to pay if you really don't need me there 
So if I get to the eight hour mark and it's getting on like eight and a half hours, maybe 8.45, I will approach the client. And by the way, they know that this conversation is coming because I have told them previously, I will approach you and I will say, hey, I think I have everything covered, but would you like me to stay? And if you would, it's that 325, I will invoice you when you return from your honeymoon. And they say, yes, no, absolutely, whatever. And by the way, if I don't feel like I've covered the wedding appropriately, I will absolutely tell them that because I believe that it's my professional responsibility to do so. So I would say, hey, you know what? It's, it's, we're about eight and a half hours. I'm just not comfortable with what I have. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to stay. Is that okay? And they can tell me yes or no. And then I will invoice them after and they will send me payment and I have never once had an issue. So hopefully that helps. Kim says, what's easiest online way to receive payments besides PayPal? Uh, there is PayPal, Square, and something called Stripe. And there may be another one that I'm forgetting. Those are the three, um, I have all three of those. I use all three of them. Uh, those are the easiest ways. Is there a reason you don't wanna use PayPal or is there something going on? By the way, the rates are very comparable. So, I mean, you're gonna get hit with fees if you accept money online, no matter what you do. When you start talking in the thousands of dollars range, yeah, it's a bummer, it's a bummer. But it's the cost of doing business. It's an expense, ah, it is what it is, right? Kim says, thank you, I'm ready to take the leap. Yes, you have boosted my confidence. That's because Kim, you can do anything, you just have to do it. <laughs> that seems pretty straightforward, right? Okay, anything else about the money? Boy, I was on fire about that money just now. I, I, th I just think it's so important to make it easy for people to pay you. Oh my goodness, why would you not do that? And anytime, and listen, you might not know all of these things right out of the gate. Of course you wouldn't. That's where experience comes in, but we're here to help you. But also, if you make a mistake and something happens, it's okay. Show yourself some grace. Ooh, I'll never do that again, but change it. Now, if something happens and you don't make a change, well, then you're an idiot. I mean, you just have to own that. But if, if you don't like the way something's working, or something happens to you. I, you know, I always say, my wedding contract started out as one page, pretty big print. It's now at two solid pages, pretty fine print. <laughs> and that's because that second page is all because I learned with experience. Everything on the second page of my contract under my terms and conditions is because something happened and then I put it in my contract. Oh, but you know what? I don't think I completed my answer I don't think I completed my answer to Brittany's question. She said, um, oh, should I start telling, should I just start telling clients or should I make an announcement? And my personal opinion is that an announcement is not necessary. I wouldn't do that. I would just have it as my terms and conditions. It's just the way that I do business. And when you get a new inquiry and they're interested, you just say, Here's my pricing, and in order to secure your date, a non-refundable retainer of $100 is due, period. That's just the way it is. And by the way, we choose our words very carefully. I would not recommend using the word deposit because the word deposit infers that you could get a refund. So a non-refundable retainer is the appropriate legal language to use so that you don't have to return somebody's money. And by the way, I am not in the business of returning money. And I'm pretty proud to say that in 14 years, I've never had to write a check to a client to return money. I am actually very proud of that because that's just not how you run a business. Giving money back to clients, no. Uh, no, that's not gonna happen. If I made a mistake or something occurred mm, that I needed to own, I think what I would probably do is offer product or something in addition, but I am not in the business of returning money. That non-refundable retainer is applied to the total amount. So it's not in addition to, it's just if your session is say $200, then you know 50% a non-refundable retainer of $100 is due in order to secure your date and then they would owe you $100 a week prior a few days prior I don't know uh, I'm not in the business of refunding money 
Hello, Trooper. And I'm also not in the business of chasing people down for money. So, um, and I've not had to. Make it easy on yourself, make it easy on your clients. I want everything for my client to be a good, fun, easy experience. And I don't want any little thing, no matter how small, to feel frustrating to them. Uh, you know, life is hard and frustrating enough for people. I certainly don't want to add to that. And in fact, I tell my brides from the beginning, I know that wedding planning can be stressful. It's your wedding, it's so important. You can stress about anything else. I don't want you to ever, ever worry about me. I will take care of everything that I can and here are the things that I can impact. Don't worry about crazy Uncle Fred. I will handle him. Don't worry that your parents are divorced and they can't stand to be in the same picture. I will play dumb and put them in the same picture like I don't know any better. <laughs> and I've done it. I don't want her to worry about anything. I want my brides to feel like when I show up, I want them to take a deep breath and say, oh, thank goodness Heather's here. Like, it's going to be okay. So I don't want any little thing to be frustrating to them at all, but especially payment. I want people to want to pay me, not, not dread it. So hopefully that helps. You can't run a business unless <clears throat> you feel comfortable collecting money. Hey, do you have any other questions? I'm going to just look here real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. I think we look good. Hey, have a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon.